Hello, it's me, DKL. Um, I just listened to the new album by Pierce the Veil titled The Jaws of Life, and I just wanted to share my thoughts on it. Um, The Jaws of Life came out today, uh, February 10th, 2023, uh, for those of you watching in the future. Um, and I've only listened through it once. So there are things that I've probably forgotten and things that maybe I didn't pick up on. Um, but the first thing that I noticed about this album is that it's slow. It doesn't have the high energy that past Pierce the Veil songs have. Songs like Caraphernalia, The First Punch, obviously King for a Day. Um, I'm actually wearing my King for a Day hoodie right now because I was really excited about this album, and I still am. Um, I want to, the things that I'm going to say are gonna kind of seem a little contradictory to this, but I did really enjoy this album. Uh, it wasn't bad by any means. It was just different from what I expected. And the reason for that is that it was lacking in energy. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but all of the songs ended up sounding the same. And like I said, this is not inherently a bad thing. Uh, they had their own unique melodies and that kind of stuff. Uh, music theory things that I don't have the knowledge or ears to really talk about. Um, This album ended up being a large departure from classic Pierce the Veil. Uh, Pierce the Veil was always high in energy ever since the flair for the dramatic, um, which I don't really care for. It's not my favorite album. Uh, if I had to pick one album to listen to, this one included, it's obviously gonna be Collide with the Sky. Um, because that one's got my favorite song on it, The First Punch. You thought I was going to say King for a Day, didn't you? Um, while this album is very good, if I had to pick, if I could only listen to one Pierce the Veil album, it's not even top three. Um, it would be number four out of five. So my ranking of Pierce the Veil albums is Collide with the Sky, Selfish Machines, Misadventures, then The Jaws of Life, and then A Flare for the Dramatic. But I'm not talking about the other albums, I'm talking about The Jaws of Life. Um, I love it when bands and artists try new things. I love that. You know, establish your own style and then change it up a little bit. That's very good. Um, and it's not that they haven't done slower tempoed songs before. I mean, uh, Stay Away From My Friends is a great example of that. And also, uh, what's it called? Tangled In The Great Escape. Those were both slower paced songs. But those also felt like Pierce the Veil songs. Um, while this album is, like I said, it's not at all bad, it doesn't feel like Pierce the Veil. Um, and in large part, that's due to the fact that it's lacking in the energy that they normally put in their songs. Because even though Stay Away From My Friends and Tangled In The Great Escape are slower songs, they still have energy. But most of the tracks on this new album don't have that. Um, this album described in a word for me would be slow. I found myself looking at the remaining time on songs more often than I normally do. And that's not a good thing 
Um, but that's just because I personally prefer faster paced songs. Um, that's just how it is with me. Uh, the one song that actually feels like a Pierce the Veil song is uh, track number two, Past the Nirvana. That one feels like a Pierce the Veil song. The rest of the tracks, though, are them trying something different, a different style of music. And it's still alternative, it's still emo. It's just different. And I'll say it again, that's not a bad thing. Different is not bad. It's good for bands to try new things. I just feel like in this case, it doesn't really work out. Um... And in large part, that's because it lacks energy. Um, this album was not what I was expecting. And maybe that's why it leaves a somewhat bitter taste in my mouth. Um, but the album itself was not bad. My favorite track by far is the one that's familiar. The one that feels like classic Pierce the Veil. I love Past the Nirvana because, like I said, it feels like a classic Pierce the Veil song. Um, and I haven't been a fan of Pierce the Veil for very long. Um, the first time I ever heard of them was back in 2020 when uh, my favorite artist, Nate Wants to Battle, covered their song King for a Day. Um, that was my introduction to Pierce the Veil. And oh boy, what an introduction. Um, and since then, I've listened to every single one of their albums. I have two of them on CD in my CD collection. And this new one will be added to that collection. It will. Um, as soon as I get it, which is in a week or so. But that's, that's not important. What's important is, um, I wish they'd sped up the songs a little bit. Like, they could leave everything the same. I just wish that the songs were faster, a bit more higher tempo, a bit more energy. Um, I don't want to say they didn't try. They obviously tried. They put a lot of love in these songs. And I do really, really enjoy them. But listening to this album, you have to think differently than you would another Pierce the Veil album. If that makes any sense. Um, this album is so far removed from what Pierce the Veil has put out previously. So while I do very much recommend listening to this album, don't listen to it like you're listening to a Pierce the Veil album. Because this is not your classic Pierce the Veil. So rather than listening to it as a Pierce the Veil album like I did, try to listen to it as its own thing separate it from Pierce the Veil. Even though it is Pierce the Veil, separate it from that. And I feel like that way you will get a lot more enjoyment out of the album. Someone just parked right next to me. Um, but yeah, don't listen to it as a Pierce the Veil album. And because if you listen to it as a Pierce the Veil album, you might be disappointed because it's like I said, it's them experimenting. They're trying a different form of music. And it doesn't work as... It doesn't fit with classic Pierce the Veil. So you can't think of it as Pierce the Veil. Because Pierce the Veil has put out four albums and have established their own style in those four albums. And now they're changing it up. And I feel like this is what Pierce the Veil is going to be moving forward. 
a calmer approach to melodies and really if anything i feel like this album was more lyrically driven than anything else it was more emphasis on what vic fuentes was singing rather than what the band was playing if that makes any sense i really hope it does um yeah, those are just my thoughts on this album. And like I said, if if I had to rank all of the Pierce the Veil albums, number one would be Collide with the Sky, hands down. Um, number two would be Selfish Machines. Number three, Misadventures. Number four, The Jaws of Life. And then number five, A Flare for the Dramatic. I just didn't really care for that one. I listened to it once and that was enough for me. Uh, maybe I should listen to it again though. But anyway, those are my thoughts on the Jaws of Life. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.